Cybercrime is a fast-growing area of crime. More and more criminals are exploiting the speed, convenience and anonymity of the, the internet to commit a diverse range of criminal activities, either physical or virtual, causing serious harm and posing threat, uh, threat to the victims worldwide. In recent times, highly complex cyber criminal networks bring together individuals from across the globe in real time to commit crimes on an unprecedented scale. These crimes could include sending virus in on different systems or posting defamation messages. Nigeria is not exempted from this nefarious activity as the nation has lost um, more than 2 billion naira, that's been 50.28% actual loss uh, value in attempted fraud value to financial fraudsters in 2016 alone. A report by the Nigerian Electronic Fraud Forum says this figure was the actual loss in money value of uh, the reported uh, over 19,000 fraud cases that took place that year. NEFF stated that fraud perpetrated through the automated teller machine recorded the highest volume of fraud followed by mobile. Now, as ATM recorded over 9,000 fraud volumes, while mobile had over 3,000 fraud volumes, the rate of financial fraud through web stood at more than 2,000 volumes, followed by point of sale, that's POS transactions, with more than 1,000 volume. Internet banking recorded more than 600 volumes. But meanwhile, the Central Bank of Nigeria again is calling for the country's Cyber Crimes Act to be enforced in order to help fight electronic uh, financial crimes. The governor of the Central Bank, Gondu Nemefili, made this, this request at the Nigerian Electronic uh, Fund Forum in Abuja. Nemefili, who was represented at the event, asked participants to deliberate on how the act could be better utilized in the financial system. It is inescapable before or therefore that firm and appropriate legal frameworks must be put in place, supported with sound and effective law enforcement, and enhanced technical and institutional capabilities to effectively protect these networks and secure the systems and infrastructure from all forms of cyber crimes. The thing to do is to develop a standard procedure uh, technologies, uh, practices, and so on and so forth to make sure that whenever anything happens, you get to know about it and you have remediation in place, you have the kind of relationship and the uh, contact you need to uh, uh, extend to individuals who are interdependent in the technology, just to prepare the technology interdependency with personnel. That's the only way you can have these uh, systems controlled and begin to uh, how people have trust in, in, in the media. Well, let's now put this into perspective. I have with me in the studio an IT expert, Ido Akinde. Thank you very much for joining me on the show today. Thank you, Tony. ATMs, automated teller machines, mobile use, POS, and all of this, these are new innovations. And we thought they came actually to give ease, you know, to some of these transactions. But some people are taking advantage of this. I don't know what you make of this. Okay, okay, so um, cybercrime is an interesting subject in the sense that um, being a component of crime generally, it's, it inherits from some of the, some of the you know, inherent problems with tackling crime. Crime by default is, is an after the fact problem, or, or should I say crime, you know, crime reduction, crime fighting which is why um, um, the law enforcers, you know, need to, a crime needs to have been committed before the, their, their, their actions are always after the fact. Okay, so, so that's on the crime side. Now, because these are electronic crimes, uh, the, the same advantages that the, that the that computers and the internet and you know the rapid rise of um, you know computerization across the world has given us are the same things that expose loopholes. That same anonymity or ease of trans transacting business over long distances, which doesn't require you to be present in a physical location with the other party, has 
opened up an avenue for someone else to claim to be who they are not. You know, so once, once, once we understand that that anonymity and risk for impersonation is there, then we can start to think about ways to reduce that risk. Okay, so um, the 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 I mean, cybercrime is 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 a big issue across the world, not just in Nigeria. You know, I heard the numbers you you quoted earlier, and there are no small numbers by any by any means. The channels, if you also look at the channels that 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 are the that have the greatest incidences of these occurrences, you see that they are the channels that are the most um, easy to use, you know, an ATM, a mobile app, you know, or, you know, a, a POS or a web transaction. You know, so, so, so there's always the, the, the fundamental thing is that with, with tackling cybercrime, there's always that need to strike the fine balance between convenience and quote unquote security you know so where you where you as a service provider want to provide electronic and online platforms for your customers for instance a bank wants to provide avenues for their customers to transact with them electronically deploy an atm deploy a mobile app deploy a pos you know you also want to balance it by putting in place certain measures that will limit the opportunities for these people, you know. So uh, there are a number of strategies, you know, um, um, including um, putting in something called multi-factor authentication. Indeed, indeed, that was that's also know, my next question because know, okay. some checks really need okay. to be put okay. into all of this. Something, I believe, something seems to be wrong somewhere, or something is not being done right somehow. Okay, that's uh, why someone is able to penetrate. And use my identity yeah. and get some money off my off of the account. Um, I don't want to my account now. Um, uh, the the obviously obviously hopefully not your account. <laughs> <laughs> you know the 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 challenging thing, like I said earlier, the challenging thing is to strike the balance. You know, now imagine now there's also the there's also the orientation problem, okay, or the orientation aspect of this problem. So. Even though the banks know that um, there are know the know the know the avenues through which cyber criminals might want to get into their system, the best that the banks can do, if you think about it, is to secure their platforms, okay, such that there is no or there is as little opportunity for break-ins within those platforms. The second step is to then orient or orientate. There are customers, there are millions of customers across the country, you know, probably across the continent, and tell them these are the practices that will expose you and increase your risk of losing information, losing money, losing reputation. Okay. So the problem then 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 comes up. If a bank or an institution or a service provider goes ahead and you know publishes a lot of information out there that says customers do not behave in the following manners. You then want to think how receptive and how um, proactive is the audience to take up that message and live by it. We've, we, we all know that in this society, we have friends and family who give their ATM cards to friends and family, who give the, um, um, the PIN to their mobile, their, mobile, their mobile phones to friends and family. You know, so, even though many times in those situations the trust network is small. Okay, Let, let's take this break now, Ido. I know I know you still have more to say, and okay. we're still going to be dwelling on this topic. Okay. We we'll take a break now, and we'll be back on the show. Please stay with us on Business Nigeria.
Thank you for staying tuned. You're, still, you're watching Business Nigeria, of course, and we're looking at cyber crimes, uh, which is fast becoming uh, a growing area of crime. Indeed, with all the records that we have and data that we have here, it seems to be very worrisome. But I'm not going to be doing that. The IT expert, he's here. He's been giving insights into issues surrounding this. Now, before we went on that break, you were, you were, you were talking about customer behavior, mm -hmm. you know, self-protection and all of that. Please, let's land on that before we move ahead. Right. Okay, to conclude that thought, um, the general public needs to needs to just sit up. People people need to take responsibility for their online activities. You know, people need to people need to be more aware. I like to just put it uh, 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 simply by saying, people need to see that the new people need to see that the pins that that they have. Either it's the ATM pin, or it's the pin to the mo to their mobile phones, or the pin to their mobile apps, or you know, you know, whatever the the digital access is, the digital access code is to their to their online profiles and online accounts. They need to start to see it as the equivalent of what used to be the wallet in their pockets, which they used to protect physically, okay, or the key to their house or the key to their car. Because what this means with this new information age is that whereas a, a thief back in the days would, would need to get access to your key yeah. to get into your house, what somebody needs to do nowadays with the age of information explosion is to gain access to your PIN, to have access to your jewels, or, or, or at least what is precious to you, whether it's corporate information or it's money in the case of financial transactions and other things. So people need to sit up. Talking about people now need to, needing to sit up, what about the institutions? What about the companies, the okay. banks? We talked about internet fraud and internet okay. ba internet okay. banking. Everybody's all about that. Oh, mm -hmm. money, anytime mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. always do these transfers. Mm -hmm. But people still, you know, so what, to, what can they do to protect their environment, protecting their systems? Okay. Okay, well, well um, um, enterprise security is big business around the world, okay? So... Um, there's there's many products uh, targeted at different segments of the business space. So, for the for the small and medium enterprises, there are, there are products that are targeted at them that will help them secure their online assets. So, for the small microfinance bank, okay, or the small um, mom and pop business, you know, in the neighborhood. They are, they, are, they are affordable products at that level. For the big banks and the other big insurance companies and the other big organizations, telcos and so on and so forth, they are products for them. For, the, for those in between, you know, yeah. for, for businesses of all size, there are enterprise products. There's, there's firewall, there's, there's endpoint protection, there's data in motion protection. There's, there's different, different layers of protection, you know. And all of these things are, 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 are designed to protect enterprise information assets. So, so what I'm getting at is that businesses also need to start to have a budget for enterprise security. Mm. And that reminds me of the government as well. Being a government that is progressively moving towards electronic avenues of serving the citizens, our government also needs to think seriously and set aside budgets for cyber security, you know, and say, okay, if, if we are serving 300,000 residents within, you know, social so local government or social so, uh, 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 area of a state, um, um, what, are, what, are, what are the assets that we're storing and what do we need to put in place to secure those assets? Indeed. Now, it brings me now to the Cybercrime Act, which is also something that even at the event yesterday in Abuja was being deliberated upon. I think Nigeria, we've gotten to a point where everything has to become a law. Everybody needs enforcement for so many things. We have the petroleum industrial bill for the petroleum sector. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have the anti-corruption bill now. Which, <laughs> you know, so did you think we needed to get to that point? And even if we get to that point, how do you think that could be properly enforced? Okay. Um, um, the, 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 the Cyber Act is a very welcome development um, because I am... I'm aware from some past experiences that um, some of our laws are a bit outdated, you know, especially with respect to electronic, um, electronic systems, computer systems, and the information age. For instance, before 
early this year slash late last year, um, our laws were so back, uh, you know, our laws were so outdated that an email, an email correspondence was not tenable in a court of law as evidence. You know, so there was this, there was this need to go back into the law and modify that and, and include, you know, an electronic correspondence. Mm. In order to prove to a court of law back in the days that you had served someone a notice, you couldn't serve an email, you couldn't bring up an email record. You know, so I understand and, I, and, and coming from that background, mm. I appreciate the, the, the move forward, you know, that we've taken by, by, by signing this act into law. What it would do is one, it will force organizations for which customers and the general public depends hospitals who are exposing, who are, who are giving customers or their patients um, online access to interact with them, hospitals, traffic management systems, traffic management boards, um, other government agencies and other critical organizations, it will force them to sit up and secure their assets. Indeed, it's interesting talking to you. I must tell you, Ido Akinde, an IT expert, giving his views on cyber crimes, particularly how to curb it is what, you, you know, it's really interesting. Thank you very much for your time on the show Thank today. Thank you very much, Mr. Tuli. Yeah.